eh, de innovación y excelencia en, en planeación de transporte y el premio de supply chain y, lo y logística. Así que, pues, bienvenido, Michael Paul, con su ponencia. So I'm going to make quite a big assumption here in that a lot of what you have seen are things that you would like to have that you've probably heard of in a number of areas. In Australia, we are very fortunate in that we already have a number of these systems in place. Our problem is that they're not necessarily connected. So in other words, we have a very good custom systems. The ICS is effectively a single window run by our customs authorities and, very, and totally paperless. When it comes to vehicle bookings, when it comes to the land sites, I'm going to talk about the land site because that's why we're here. When it comes to getting vehicles in and out of terminals efficiently, we have a vehicle booking system run by One Stop. You will hear from One Stop tomorrow. I believe they're actually implementing it at 8pm uh, here in KI. An excellent system. It already does a lot of what, these, of what is being said about these systems. So vehicles are controlled. Freeman Ports has 20 minute turnaround times. I think there are ports in many parts of the world that would dream about having a vehicle enter a terminal and leave in 20 minutes. Not only that, but we already have a booking system, and I think we're the only one in the world, for the empty container parks, so the empty depots. Because in other words, the whole chain has a sequential means of controlling the vehicles in and out. So I'm going to assume that you know that. I'm also going to ask for a raising of hands. How many people here are Peruvian? Thank you for beating Australia 2 0 in the World Cup. So I'm very upset about that, but I'll continue. We continue with a number of different uh, uh, innovations. Just to give you a quick idea, Fremantle is the only port for the western two thirds of Australia. So if you remember how big Australia is, it's about 4,000 kilometres across. Our nearest port, competitive port, is 2,500 kilometres away. But we do about 770,000 TU a year. That's about what Shanghai does in one week. Nonetheless, smaller ports can be innovative, they can do things, and they can do it at reasonable cost. So that's an example. Yesterday, I spoke for one hour on the truck control system. Today, I've got about five minutes. So this is going to be a very good overview. So what we've been doing is trying to get better coordination and better productivity. Because despite these booking systems, there are still things that will happen. They don't happen that often. Things control really quite well. But every so often there will be snarls. So what we have is we have a truck control system to take care of things. So it includes congestion management. We have chuck marshalling to keep trucks off roads, get queues off roads. A detection system and messaging, as was mentioned in the last presenter, getting messages, and sorry, from uh, Adam earlier on from SAP, getting messages directly to the drivers when there are issues, which involves then uh, in cab telematics, as well as our own variable messaging signs throughout the port, a series of different things. So I'll go into a couple. Why is it important? Because it improves the length of your, the working length of your port, the life of your port. It improves the relationship with your community partners, and I know that's becoming more and more important in South America. And it increases the efficiency and increases then the port's value in everybody's eyes. And the congestion management system is a core example of this. That ISCA there is the Infrastructure Sustainability Council of Australia, and we received an excellent rating, that is the, the highest rating, to uh, for our project dealing with North Key, so our development of this new land area when we had the uh, the, uh, the dredging. So what happens there is that when there is a problem, by the way, this is free, free to all users. When there is a problem with the port, the site just simply signs on to any internet site. I could do it right now, here in Peru, I could start that system up. And it lets people know the variable messaging types throughout the port. DP World, not of course that there would ever be a problem with DP World here in Kaya. They work perfectly all the time, as we know. But in Australia, occasionally we might have a problem. So DP World says, please, go to the teammate, don't come to me, because I have a problem. Go to the truck marshalling area, TMA. When they're there, the driver is picked up by license plate recognition. They then have their, their license plate up on the screen. They confirm it if it's correct, or they can change it. And they confirm the time that they want to go in because we have a booking system. 
You try and get into a terminal in Australia without a bookie, they won't be winning. You have to have a bookie. Everything's already been pre-confirmed. There is no paper going into a terminal and no paper going into an empty depot in Australia either. So they confirm who they are. These, these signs are all over the port and when they get in, then the sign has the time to then clear the congestion that they have because they don't want trucks in the way and then they call the trucks in, in an ordered manner. Automatically if they want, or one by one, depending on the priority. So they can say, I want that truck, because he's got what I want now, not that truck, let them wait. And the drivers get clear instructions and messages while they're waiting to the truck marshal here. And so they know the system's on, they know how long they've got to wait, they know where they are in the queue, so they can then be controlled, and pulled up and controlled that. Okay. What we, that was then the first thing. They're going back a few years now. What have we done in the meantime? Well, the port in Western Australia does not operate the terminals. It does not operate the parks. We are a landlord. So really, what power do we have? Not a lot, really. But we have leases for those operators to say, these are the things you need to do. And, we, and with that new, new land area that was developed just out there when we did the dredging project to get us down to 14.7 metres to allow the post panamax ships in, we then had new leases. So what we said is, okay, these are the things we need to do. These gave us a chance to, uh, to put in efficiencies. So the KPIs are linked to results and want them to achieve. There are incentives for good performance. Not penalties, not charges, but incentives. They get money if they do the right thing. Think about trying to get the positive aspect out of this. And we monitor it through the tenant operating performance system. So it's a thing called TOMS that automatically monitors. In other words, they input the information. We don't have a whole bank of people inputting information. It's on the owners, the transport operator, or the logistics operator, or the container part to enter that information. But there is a requirement to audit results. So what we do is we verify this through intelligent transport systems. Remember, we're a small port. We don't have a lot of money. So what we've done is we've determined what are the key KPIs we want to try and uh, influence. The queuing, so you know this yourself in the land side area. It's queuing, it's getting trucks in and out. It's getting them to operate after hours. So you use the road infrastructure better because everybody wants to get in at 7 a.m. in the morning Nobody wants to get in at 7 p.m. in the evening. So how do you get them to not queue? How do you get them to turn around the trucks in time? And how do you get them to operate after hours? So the first element, which we did about three years ago, was the queuing control. You can't monitor this manually because it's just simply too, it's, you know, it's too subjective. So we have a system that eliminates it by then using smart cameras, zone technology, to work out when this truck is on the road. And it sends out an alert. If he doesn't get his truck off the road, then he's got a problem. He does not get his incentive. And we can then monitor that later. The next one is vehicle detection. Turn time. It's pretty simple. Truck in, truck out. License plate recognition gives you a unique ID to pick up that vehicle. Uh, over time, you build up a database of who those guys are anyway. So you can monitor it. It doesn't cost a lot. Five thousand dollars gets you a pretty good truck to uh, vehicle detection, or sorry, an ANPR camera. Well, there's a license plate recognition camera nowadays. Two of them gets you time in, time out. With that, we can then confirm whether the empty container park has been turning those trucks around in time or not. They've got 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes to turn those trucks around, depending on the number of containers. Think about that. If your depots are turning a truck around in 20 to 25 minutes, and remember the terminal's already doing it in 20. So that then helps us in sustainability by reducing then uh, you know, CO2 emissions. And you can sort of see there, sorry, just gone too far. You can see there how it operates. Vehicle in, vehicle out, tells you what the time is. Is he on time, is he not? You can see the build up, and you can see that things are getting worse, so you can act on it. You already get that information one second after the end of the hour, not one month, as was previously the case. Finally, we get the information into the cabs directly. When we've got a message, when we've got an issue, we send it through to the telematics devices within the cabs. What does it allow?